Welcome, everyone. This is a very impromptu, but most uh, excited. I'm excited about sharing this information with you. I'm calling this Flow into Fall. And uh, a little background, I have some tips and tools that I share when it's time for everyone to go back to school. And I have sent those out yesterday. Was it only yesterday? Wow. Um, and then I realized I would love to say more. You know, it's like I wanted to get with you all and share more. They're simple reminders for sure. Most of it, you know, uh, and there's some tips and tools that I'm gonna add to it all. So before we jump in, uh, let's just take a minute because the pause is really the most important thing you can remember for all of your back to school experiences. Uh, so I'm just, I have my phone on airplane mode, but I do use a timer. So I'm just gonna set a timer, just one minute. We're gonna do a minute and a half, just settling in. So if you wanna close your eyes, you can, if you wanna keep them open and just start to bring your awareness inward. Mainly, this is just for me to land. And all I'm doing is just noticing my breath and inviting a little bit of a deeper breath and a slower breath. Now I'm just allowing my heart to open, settling and opening and softening. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, well that, is your tip number one is uh, pause, just give it a beat. And if you were to just remember that from today, you'd be ahead of the game without a doubt. So there's plenty more, but that's a uh, tool number one. And that's something that I am getting more and more skillful at doing, but it takes a lot of practice because it's so easy to want to just jump right into whatever I have to do and whatever I'm doing next. And when I take that minute and a half, that was 90 seconds to just take a breath and just get in there and be with myself, it makes a difference. So let's jump in. This is uh, called fall, flow into fall. Uh, I could also call it fall into flow uh, because that's the idea here is how can you make a very monumental transition in the year, something that you all are going through with your people, um, or maybe you're just going through with yourself. This is a big change of the year. In some ways, it almost feels like the new year. And so I just want to share some tips uh, some reminders and some questions. We're not going to do writing on this call. That's typically what I do in most of my calls because it's so valuable for you to hear from yourself. That's not what we'll do today, but I am going to share some writing questions and prompts that you can then take and play with. Um, so those will be, I'll say them and then they'll be in the chat so you can write them down. Um, Oh, so yes, so we're gonna go over my uh, kind of five greatest hits for being more mindful and aware and present during this transition for yourself and your people. And then uh, I'm gonna tell you how I'm spending the next nine months, how I'm gonna be supporting people going through the school year. So we'll do that at the end, um, but let's dive in. I'm so excited that you're here, thank you. All right, 
um, first tip, pause and check in. So we already can check the box on pausing. Uh, you know, minute and a half is not that much, but it can really slow you down enough to hear yourself and to really get a beat on, you know, where are you at? So let me back up. We've got these humans that you love more than anybody on the planet, and they're going back to school, many of them. And um, hold on. Oh, people can't hear. Okay, that's being handled. Um, okay, so let me pause and <laughs> come back. Uh, so yes, you've got your people, they're heading back to school and uh, it can be a lot. It's an evocative time because you're moving from summer and you all know this, you're living it, um, but I'm just gonna lay it out because sometimes having it reflected back is really valuable because you're so in it, you're so in the thick of it that sometimes it's really hard to get that perspective on what is shifting and how much is required of everyone this time of year. So it was summer and you probably had your people, um, you know, they were doing whatever they were doing. The older ones may have been working or doing camps and the younger ones were home. Mm -hmm. And now here we are, and some young people have been back in school for weeks now because everybody is different. Some are going today, I'm in Maine, and that seems to be where the day that a lot of people are starting. And then, uh, you know, a lot of East Coasters don't start till after Labor Day. So we're in this window of change, of transition. And um, it's a big one because not only is your family life changing, you know, you're all going in maybe different directions than you were going this summer, um, but a lot more is being required of your young people. And in turn, a lot more is being required of you because there's a lot being asked of you, their parents in the midst of this as well. Um, so what I love doing is supporting people to be intentional and to really practice some very basic, what I call the essentials so that you can both really find some awareness and steadiness and clarity within yourself, and then also be able to help your young people, your growing people, I like to call them. So first and foremost and always is pause and check in. And the reason for that is because this can be a really swirly, emotional, evocative time of the year. You know, like I said, so much has to be considered and handled. And you've got these young people who are out there for, you know, hours at a time, five days a week, learning and being asked to, you know, perform in some ways and be present for their school experience. And so, you know, there's a lot in there. And so you've got just the general emotion of, kind of turning the calendar and realizing, wow, my people are another grade older. So that's evocative in itself. Just the awareness of like time passing and your people getting older. The other is exhaustion. I mean, it's exhausting to go to school and, you know, then come home and some are in sports or activities. There's a lot of energy out for them. And there's a lot of energy out for you because you're helping them, but you've also got your own life going on. Um, and the truth is, and we'll talk a lot about this, but everyone, the whole system, the whole family might be a lot more wobbly, more dysregulated because that's inherent often to transitioning into new routines. Um, so it's easy to want to just go out and just put your attention on how do I help them, but I'm going to really uh, make a real case for the value of you first and you really cultivating moments and practices of self-awareness so that you can really be present with whatever you're experiencing. Because the minute you become present to, oh, wow, I'm really feeling unsteady about the fact that my young person is off in high school and not with us as much. That was one of the things that came up 
when I ask the question on Instagram, what's, what's challenging? It's the idea that, you know, we used to be able to have a lot of time together and now they're busy off doing their own things and there's, you know, less time. So just naming that and saying, oh, wow, that really gets me. That's, that's kind of dysregulating. That's a little upsetting. Um, or just the fact that there's being more asked of you. You might have big feelings about that. You might be ecstatic that they're back to school and you acknowledge that. So it's not about going in and only finding the things that are dysregulated or wobbly or off. It's also noticing like, wow, look at us doing this. You know, look at us having these experiences and being these people together and off doing these amazing things. So really it's uh, just a simple moment of pause and just recognizing that, wow, I've been out and on. Now I'm gonna go in and off for a moment. And the truth is, if you can practice this a couple of times a day at those key moments, specifically, you know, when you first wake up, if you can just catch yourself and go, all right, where am I today? Um, so, you know, the hows of this, the way I see it is pause and check what I call your gauges. You've got your brain, what brain state are you in? I talk a lot about, you know, we've got a human brain state, which we can access when we're more resourced and we have more juice in our cup. You've got a more mammalian, that middle brain state that is more edgy and can be crispy and a little emotional. And sometimes it's a positive that you're just elated. Um, and then you've got that more reptilian, you know, really stressed brain state where you are dysregulated. So naming where you are, you know, like today I sat and did my gauge checks before this. And what I realized was I was mostly human, but I had a little edge of a uh, mammal that I wasn't as relaxed as I might have wanted to be. And so naming that and just being completely okay with that and then really having compassion for the fact that I was feeling that way, that changes it. That allows something different to be experienced and nothing needs to be different. It's not about changing it. It's truly just the byproduct of naming it so that I can be present with it. And in being present with it, it seems to shift. Um, checking in on my heart, you know, this is a really important time uh, to be aware of how we're, how we're doing in here. You know, again, there's so much about your people getting older and having more responsibilities and having more interests potentially outside of your life with them. So what's that doing to your heart? How does that evoke anything in there? What's stirring? Um, checking on your body, you know, if you're tight and tense, it, it, you might not even notice it. It might be that you're just getting up and going and off you are. And I promise you, if you're tight and tense, the people around you are gonna sense that. So loosening up your molecules, relaxing your body, just noticing, okay, what do I need to get a little softer here? That could be valuable. The emotional weather. What's the emotional weather in you? Is it blustery? Are you out of sorts? Is it sunny? We had a rainstorm this morning and now the sun's coming out. And I sometimes feel like that in me where it's like, oh, okay, there's a lot going on, but now, ooh, here we go. There's some light behind that cloud. Um, and then my gut, you know, what's happening in my, in my gut, my gut, my knowing, my guide inside. What's that bigger knowing trying to, uh, or not trying, but what's the awareness that I can tap into when I've checked the gauges and it allows me to be present and then through presence, whoo, I open up to this deeper knowing, you know, if I wanna, I call it slowing down to the speed of knowing that the minute I pause and check in, I'm inviting a, another part of me, that big beingness to come through because I've gotten a little more aligned in what's going on in there. So, those are the gauges that you can be checking and that's a good way to get a little more awareness of where you are, self-awareness. Um, and here are a few questions that you can uh, ask yourself. 
You know, it's as simple as just saying, how am I feeling about this shift? What feeling, so how am I feeling about this shift? Simple, just let it through, whatever it is. It's probably a lot of different things. What feelings does this time of year evoke? You know, it might be excitement, it might be relief, it might be anxiety, it might be exhaustion, it might be joy, like whatever it is for you, just name it. All different parts have all different experiences of this transition. So being present and aware can make a difference. And then, you know, how do I want to feel as we head into fall? You know, taking five minutes or even three minutes and just writing, how do I want this fall to go? Like, what's the, what are some of the important pieces that I want to be conscious of, thoughtful about? What do I want to consider as we move into the fall? So that's just checking in and you can do it daily. You can do it multiple times a day. You know, I think that if you really wanted to commit to this and it does, it just takes commitment and practice, not just, it takes commitment and practice, but you might set alarms and say, okay, I might not have time to do it in the morning, but before we reconvene in the afternoon or evening, I'm gonna take one minute, two minutes, three minutes, and I'm gonna check it, I'm gonna pause. And I'm gonna check in. And here's why, because your people are tuned into you. They can feel you're the regulator. So this is, this is we're moving into number two, fuel up. You know, basically um, once you've done the check-in and you start to recognize and notice where, where you are, you know, a lot of times what you hear is, oh, I'm, I'm, my energy's low. I need some fuel. I, you know, we're not per perpetual motion machines. We have a fuel tank that allows us to regulate ourselves, but we need energy in order to do that. And here's the thing, your people have attached to you so that you're their regulator in the early years. And that changes over time, certainly, but for a good chunk of the time that they're in your home with you, they're coming home with an unconscious expectation to plug into you and feel fed in some ways uh, by your energy. And if you're depleted, which you might be, uh, they're going to feel that and it's not going to go well. So you're the regulator. You're the one they're coming home to. Uh, having ways to consciously add energy is a really not just a good habit of humanhood. It's, it's vital. Like in these moments of transition, it's extra important. And here's the beautiful thing. A little bit goes a long way. It's more about the consistency than any sort of large doing. So how, you know, I, I made little lists, whys and hows. The hows, you know, I don't know. It's gonna be, it, it, it's up to you, but I'm gonna give you some suggestions and you might say, no, 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 no. And then that might get you to your yes. So the bigger question is, what's your essential? What's the thing or things that give you energy? But if you're not sure, here are a few ideas. One is, and most people don't wanna hear this, but, get up you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes earlier than everyone and just have a little time to get with yourself. It might be five minutes, I don't know. So that's one, uh, you know, drink a big glass of water really slowly and consciously, uh, jump up and down and do some jumping jacks and get your motor running. Like really literally imagine you are fueling yourself with water and movement. You're getting your system engaged after sleeping or at the end of the day. Um, set a timer and pause and meditate. Whether it's one minute or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, there's not one time I've ever set a timer and shut my eyes and invited a moment of stillness that I've regretted it. It is always valuable. And it is always, always valuable when I'm interacting with other humans, especially the ones I love the most. Um, write down appreciations. For those of you who have been with me over the years, you know that's kind of my thing. It's like writing down all the ways life feels good 
is, is vital. Like that's like air to me now. I need to do that. It is so valuable for the well-being of my system and it doesn't take long and I love it every time I do it. Um, get outside, go walk around, even if it's just walking to the end of the driveway and back. Really, these are, you know, there's uh, movement, there's doing something creative, you know, have a thing of postcards and do a little drawing in the morning just to, you know, add a little energy. So some ideas now, here are some questions you can ask yourself. What can I do today to fill my cup, charge my battery, uh, get into alignment? You know, what's essential? Oh, okay. And then what's essential to my well being and how will I make it happen today or the rest of this week? So go day by day. You might, they might change, but I would say if you don't have this in you, if it's a new idea, if it's a new concept to be thoughtfully fueling yourself, adding energy, giving yourself something that feels uh, essential, that's the word. Um, pick one thing and find the microest version of it. So if it's not 10 appreciations, make it one appreciation. If it's not 10 minutes of meditation, make it one minute. If it is not a run around the, you know, a five mile run, make it, I walk to the mailbox and I consciously slowly walk back. It can be so small, but if you do it regularly and see it as a fueling system, a fueling situation, it will, it will help and it will allow you to be more present. I mean, it's doing a few things. One, it's giving you energy to handle whatever's coming up. Two, it's modeling really healthy humanhood for your people. If they see, oh, you know, mom or dad needs that little moment before getting on with the day and they, you know, that's, you're speaking that language. You're speaking the language of self-care to these people you love. That's a beautiful modeling. Um, and the other one that's probably the most important is you'll just be more present. You'll just be with yourself. And in being with yourself, you're going to be able to be present with your people. It's, it's, it's not easy, but it's simple. So that's number two, fuel up. Thank you. Let me have a drink. Let's pause for a second. I love this stuff. Love it. So thank you for being here because this is my jam. Um, third, experiment. So I talk about experimenting a lot. And in this moment, the, this transition, I'm going to invite you to experiment with making space. So one of the things that seems true uh, as young people head back to school is the schedule gets a lot tighter. There's a lot more that has to get done. There's schedules that have to be handled and there's moving abouts that need to happen. And you know, a lot of times your little people are waking up really early and then they're going off to school and then maybe they're going on to a sport or they have homework. Like there's not a lot of space for families in, in family life uh, when, when the school year is happening. So I love this idea of making space. And the way that I think about that, the way that I learned about that is it's more energetic. It's more of a sense of pulling the scope back and broadening the perspective and noticing when you're feeling like you're on the hamster wheel and cutting it, you know, that pause and going, oh, right, I do have a minute. I don't feel like I do, but I do. If I actually stop, I do. So what do I mean by that? It's like the shifting out of summer mode and heading into fall, it's, it's inevitable that there's change. You know, even if you're homeschooling, it's likely you do it differently in the fall than you do in the summer. Um, that's evocative. It throws us out of balance. It's not bad. There's nothing wrong about it. It's just, it causes disruption in the momentum of where you've been going. You were in summer mode and now you have to shift gears and get in school year mode. Um, it is evocative. It will stir up big feelings, both in you and your people because inherent to moving into new things and growing and evolving is some disequilibrium, some out of 
sinkness. And so when you as the person, uh, you know, steering the ship of family life can invite this intention of let's experiment with making some space. And, you know, what does that mean? It means, you know, being a little more spacious with your words. So remembering that your people are off at school and it's likely they're being told to listen a lot of the day. And if they're not being told to listen by teachers, they're interacting and being social with their young, you know, their friends and their peers. So there's a lot of on, there's a lot of uh, emotional, physical, energetic, intellectual on. Um, so when they get back with you, they are depleted. They don't have a lot of juice left. <laughs> They've spent it. So if you can really uh, recognize that for some, they, they just need you to be quiet. They just need you to be a non-anxious mirroring presence. And that requires a feeling of spaciousness. And you can't do it all the time, but maybe you can do it on the weekends, or maybe you have some rituals in the afternoon that you experiment with where you don't ask them questions for right away when they get in the car or off the bus, that you, you know, you, you're more thoughtful about letting there be more quiet for them. Um, be spacious with your concerns. This, like I said, is an evocative time. And a lot of times these young people are getting overdone and dysregulated at school. And when they come home, you're getting the lower brain state version of their day, which is about what was wrong and who did this and why they're upset about this thing. Um, and it could be easy to want to be reactive to that. This is your child. These are the people you love the most. You want their lives to be wonderful. What I'm going to say is just give it a little space. Just hold it. You don't have to act on it. Just be with them in their upset. That's part of how we re-regulate. We, you know, it's like with a little baby person, they get overdone and they go, wow, 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 wow. And you hold them and you comfort them. With a bigger person, especially a school age person, it isn't always wah, wah, wah. It's that person was mean to me and that thing happened that was really bad and that was really bad and now I hate you. And it's, it's a lot of dumping. It's a lot of emotional gunk being handed to you. Uh, and it can be very evocative and there could be a way that you get triggered and then wanna react and do something. But I'm gonna invite you just to experiment with making space around it and making space around your reactions. And then that's a whole nother ball of wax because as these young people arrive back to you or at the end of the week or even on the weekends and they're dysregulated and they're trying to throw their emotional bomb in your direction because you're their safe base and they're dysregulated, they're out of sorts, they're overdone, it's, almost impossible, but not, uh, to not take that personally and not react to it, especially when we consider our sort of old thinking around, well, that's misbehavior. You know, the idea that your children are misbehaving and, and oh my gosh, I better discipline that so that I don't have somebody out there in the world acting in these unsavory ways. But when you pause and you slow it down and you spend time with me, <laughs> you recognize, oh, wow, they are overdone. That is an overdone person who's so out of sorts that they're just lobbing their upset to me and I can either react to it or I can cultivate skill around holding boundaries but also holding a lot of empathy and compassion for those dysregulated people, those nervous systems that are just afraid, really overdone. So um, those are some of the ways. Now, another one is be spacious in the midst of your transitions, the ons and offs, the ins and outs, the launches and landings, as my friend uh, Stan Tatkin says. So, you know, again, having some rituals around how you do the drop-off and having some rituals for yourself, maybe it has nothing to do with them. 
but having some rituals of how you come back together. And maybe it isn't with a lot of talking and questions. Maybe it's having a, a little game of catch in the yard or sitting outside and having a snack together. You know, I don't know what it is for you, but that would be a fun thing to consider. And then remembering, I mean, and this is so simple and I know you know it, but I'm just gonna say it again. Remember, it's not gonna stay this way. I mean, they're truly on-ramping. You're all on-ramping into another mode and it will take a little time. Sometimes it takes a day, sometimes it takes weeks, sometimes it takes months, uh, but it is guaranteed it's going to change. There will be more of a rhythm found. And so what I love to say, whether it's welcoming a new baby into the family or uh, a child going on to college, whatever the transition is, put a frame around it. I, I hope that makes sense. What I mean by that is note that this is a transition and that it is probably going to be a more emotional, evocative, wobbly time for one or more of you as a family. And so, you know, what I said here is put a frame around the next several weeks in your mind, like actively say we're in the midst of a transition. Things are not going to go smoothly all the time. So celebrate when they do and, you know, figure out what you need when they don't, um, because it can save you a lot of unnecessary discomfort and bring a whole lot more peace. Uh, you know, I think it's so easy. It, we live in this world, I think many of us, where we just, don't want it to be uncomfortable. We want things to be flowing. I, I, I'm guilty of that. And yet when I do go through transitions and I do embrace that something is changing and I do feel all the feelings and allow the people around me to feel what they're feeling, um, it does go more smoothly and then it does shift. That's inevitable. So giving it some time and you know, all of the questions that came up when I asked on Facebook, what's challenging was, you know, can be, can be answered in some ways with, you know, make, you know, pause <laughs> already. Everything I said, pause, be thoughtful about how you're fueling so that you have some human brain juice to be present and then experiment specifically with being a place where things are slowed down and uh, there's more space. There's more space for emotions. There's more space for, um, you know, having some time alone for some of your young people. So play with that. So some of the questions you can ask yourself in this regard, how can I make more space for myself today? Maybe that's your question in the morning. Maybe that's your check-in question. How can I make more space for myself today? How can I make more space for my people? And what does spaciousness feel like for me? You know, even the act of just considering what does it mean to feel more spacious sometimes brings more spaciousness. You know, I've had clients over, you know, the last 20 years where their unconscious mantra is, I have no time, I have no time, I have no time. And as you can imagine, they don't have much time. So what if you note and invite and get curious and experiment with, okay, what would it be to feel spacious? And it doesn't mean that you, you know, maybe it does, maybe you abandon school altogether and off you go in a RV to explore the world. I don't know, I don't have any clue what anybody else is here for, but I do know you can find little pockets to experiment with this sense of like, okay, what is it, what is it for us to create a family system that can feel spacious. So play with that. Um, four is steady the ship. So let me just recap. We talked about checking in, pausing and checking in, fueling up, experimenting with making space. Uh, and then four is steadying the ship. So why, what does that even mean? Basically what I mean by that, well, let me share. Uh, getting back into the fall groove can be a, mi a, a mixed bag of easy and challenging moments. As you know, it's inherently dysregulating because of all the moving parts that have to be shifted from summertime into fall. 
So when you can focus on fueling and steadying. So to me, fueling is the day-to-day -day essentials that give me energy. So for me, it's these check-in writing prompts that I do every day. It's appreciating and it's doing some sort of movement. And then often there's a little pause or a meditation that goes with the writing. So pause and write, appreciate, and then move. Um, and so that's the fueling. Now the steadying is when I'm wobbly, when I'm triggered, what are the things that slow me down and get me back to me and really get me present so I can pop out, as we like to say, pop out of that reactivity. Um, so, you know, there's steadying yourself, which we've been talking about. I mean, that's the crux of my work. It's like, if you want to be present and available and useful to these humans, it's going to go easier if you're attending yourself regularly so that you do have the capacity to handle whatever is swirling around you, specifically with these people that you love so much. So first you, really cultivating the skills, practicing the skills. I know that sounds crazy. Why do we have to practice pausing? We do. I mean, unless you are masterful at it, great, teach me because I'm I'm teaching this stuff and I still have to practice it every single day and be mindful of it. So cultivating these skills of pausing and checking in and knowing what I need when I get triggered, when I get thrown off and how to rebalance myself, how to be with myself so I don't spin off into more dysregulation. Um, and then there's how to be with them. You know, there were two, it was interesting because there was, uh, Two people, one with a young person, I think they're in preschool, maybe early elementary school. A mom said, you know, the after school meltdowns are intense. And then one with a high schooler who said, you know, how do I not take the grumpy, you know, unsavory behavior at the end of the day personally? So here's two totally different ages, <laughs> little humans and, you know, almost emerging adults. And the parents are still asking a similar question. How do I, you know, help them help myself so I don't take it personally? And then how do I help them? Um, I think a lot of it is getting curious. You know, if you know what steadies them, great. But if you're not sure, then get curious. And, you know, do they need connection? Do they need space? You know, it's like a lot of the intentional parenting movement is about connection. And what I've come to know over the years is connection doesn't always, isn't always the thing that your people want right away after school. They sometimes need some serious downtime to collect themselves before they're available for connection. So be open, be curious, experiment, ask them, what would be a great way we could do afternoons? How do you, what do you need when you get home from school? Like how beautiful to not think you need to know, but to ask them and to be curious, put on your curious glasses and just spaciously observe and try things, but with a lot of um, permission, but again, like asking them not assuming you know. You don't have to know everything about what they need. You want them to be, you, you might ask them, what do you need? And they might go, I don't know. But the fact that you even asked is really useful. And you keep asking and say, hey, let's try this. Oh, wow, how did that feel when we did X after school? How do you like it when I ask you questions when I don't ask you questions? Like, wow, that would be so cool. Um, you know, once you've filled up in the morning a little bit, if that feels good to them, spend a little time of not hustling, just be there. And it might be one moment of eye to eye or skin to skin or heart to heart. You know, it might be they're taking a shower and instead of you uh, rushing around, maybe you take one minute and you sit with a cup of tea or coffee and you just appreciate them. You know, you're not even doing anything to them or with them, but you're, you're inviting a different quality of energy in yourself which might actually feel like an emotional fill up for them. 
you know, you need, they need food, they need physical meals and snacks, and they need emotional meals and snacks. And that's what I'm talking about here. That's how we can steady ourselves and others is nonverbal, eye to eye, skin to skin, heart to heart. Um, giving them pre-minders, like spending a little time, ideally, you know, not too far at the end of the day, because that can be not the time, but maybe they've been home and you've had some food and you say, all right, tomorrow, this is what's going to happen. And you give them a sense of what's coming and you don't need to, I mean, it's different for every kid. You might realize that doesn't work for our people, but you might try it so that you've communicated what's going on because a lot of times you're holding the schedules and you, they don't know, you know, they know they're going to school, but they may not know they have a doctor's appointment after that, or, you know, they might not know it's the weekend. <laughs> so you giving them the heads up. And I think, oh my gosh, like absolutely having a little ritual, whether it's like, you know, Friday evening when everybody's done with the week and maybe you're having dinner uh, maybe you do dinner outside while it's still nice, or maybe you get pizza and you don't have to cook. So you can sit on the living room floor and just be chill. And maybe you ask your people, what do you want this week? How do you want this weekend to go? What would be, what would feel like a really beautiful weekend for you? You know, maybe you've taken a little time beforehand to uh, consider for yourself and you can consider the bigger picture for the family but, you know, imagine growing up in a family where everybody got to say, I think I need downtime this weekend, or I think I want to go have a play date, or, um, you know, and you can say, I think on Sunday, we're going to make sure we have the afternoon all together. Like, you get to create it, and bringing them in on that can be very regulating for the system. Um, and I'll just make another, you know, another pitch for this uh, idea of emotional snacks more than anything, you know, being aware of eye contact, being aware of saying what you appreciate about who they are, not just what they're doing, um, how you're appreciating you as their parent, you know, speaking languages of self-awareness and clarity and appreciation that goes not a long way, it goes infinity. It's so valuable and it's so easy to forget. And that's why I like reminding people. Um, all right, here's some things you can ask yourself. What fuels and or steadies each of your people? Again, you may not know, uh, so get curious and bring them in on that conversation. Don't assume, make it very, say, here's what I think, but what do you know about you? I mean, invaluable, I promise. Uh, how can I add some emotional energy to their system? What are some ways that they can, I can fuel them beyond food and making, helping them get rest? What are the emotional ways I can, and if it's, you know, a kid that loves physical contact, maybe it's a big giant bear hug before they go for the day. If it's a person who is clearly not a physical person, maybe it's a little note that you write and put on the bathroom mirror. I love you and think you're amazing. Like it can be so micro, but it's so easy not to do it when you're in the hamster wheel of regular life. So that's what I do. I just invite people to step out for little moments, consider, and then go back in and have these little tweaks that help you get to the life that you're wanting. It's so, so, so simple and wonderful and I love doing it. All right, five uh, is be intentional because here's the thing, there might be meltdowns and I would say there probably will be meltdowns. <laughs> like that is almost a guarantee uh, because it's a giant adjustment. I've said it and again, don't expect it. I say this almost all the time. Don't expect it and don't be surprised by it. Like that's the thing is you've all, many of you have heard me say this for years and I'm imagining that when your kids were five and I was saying it and now that your people are maybe in high school and you're thinking, really still the meltdowns after school? Yeah, totally. 
I know if I went back to school right now and I was dealing with what they're dealing with for that many hours a day, I would be pretty cranky and probably melting down on the people that I live and love with. And so that would be not fun. And it would be a function of my dysregulation, not a personality flaw or a behavior issue, right? So um, a lot is being asked of them. They are stretching and they're doing it beautifully. Um, and they're spending it all out there. They've got a limited, just as all of us, have a limited amount of energy that they can use to learn and sit still and be social and uh, you know practice things that they're doing. It's so much and they're doing it so beautifully at the cost of their ability to be regulated at home with you. So um, they're using up their energy out there and what they get home, what they're looking for is re-regulation. And when we're overdone, re-regulation can look a lot like very unsavory, emotional, yucky behavior. Um, but here's the thing. And I mean, if you want to write it on your arm or get a tattoo, it's not personal. <laughs> like it is so not personal. Like it is not about you. They are overdone and it's not fun to be around that. And I'm not saying you don't help them find new skill around what they do with that. So it doesn't just come out at you. But the first step is saying, whoa, that's not, you know, you can be Velcro with it or you could be Teflon. And I promise you, they would way rather you were Teflon, even when they're coming at you and wanting to hook you. I promise. It's really weird that we do that as humans. Uh, but think about it. They're five, 10, 15 of a hundred years. I'm 51 and I'm still learning this stuff. I'm still learning how to manage my system when I get stressed and overdone and triggered. I have to teach it in order to go deep into figuring it out for myself. And so remembering that you can react or you can cultivate new skill around how you handle their meltdowns, especially this time of year, uh, imagine the gift that you'd be giving them if you did that. So, you know, it's not personal and then be intentional with how you want to meet those moments. You know, having a little plan for when your child comes home and maybe for the first 15 minutes, they're being their beautiful, joyful self. And then all of a sudden, click, they're gone and they're messing with their sibling or they're being really rude to you or they're complaining about something that happened. How do you wanna be with that? How do you wanna catch yourself, name that you're getting dysregulated, so that slows it down. Tend your mama or papa heart who feels like, oh, my child is being mean. That's real and you can tame, tend that. And then have some ways of being and a lot of it is zipping it, not, not engaging. You know, If you can stay present and hear them and empathize, great. But if you need to step out and go Splash your face with water, take a drink, get a snack. It's okay. It's, it's all okay. It's really, if you think about, and that's the bigger thing. One of you said, you know, I'm having a tough time. My, my child's coming home dysregulated and it's, um, it, it, it's making, uh, sorry, I lost my notes. It's making the evening harder. You know, there's a lot of emotion and what do I do? And it's like, all of this, <laughs> you do all of this and you experiment with ways to slow it all down and be present with them when they're having a hard time and mostly really getting with yourself and really empathizing and having compassion for the fact that this is intense. Um, but also to uh, you know talk it through and have some plans for, well, how do we need to re-regulate before we jump into homework? Or how do we need to, uh, you know, do we need to go outside and run around uh, before we, you know, it's like, I think it's really crazy that we ask children to be gone and on for as many hours that they are, and then to come home and do more. And so, and I get it, you have to help that. You, you are often in the position of helping with that. 
So as you're starting this school year, give it some time, but experiment with finding some ways to, you know, it might be your person does best to come home, get it done and be off and playing after that. It might be that your person does best to have a snack and maybe do some art or go for a walk or go outside and play. Um, it might be that you know that your child does best to go and have a little time on the screen and check out for a little while. I don't know what your recipe is, but be open and curious to figuring it out with them. And backing up from that is be intentional. What, how do you want to show up in service to your whole family as everybody is adjusting, especially if like they're going from elementary school to middle school, that's an adjustment. If they're going middle to high school, that's an adjustment. There's a lot of adjustments. Um, so here are some questions you can ask. Uh, how do I typically react when my children are out of sorts from being overdone, melting down and or acting in unsavory ways? That's an interesting question. How do I want to respond when my children are out of sorts from being overdone, melting down, and or acting in unsavory ways? Uh, what am I appreciating about each of my people who are in the midst of big transitions right now? And what am I appreciating about myself as a parent right now? And what am I appreciating about our family? And then I think on Fridays, and then again on Sundays asking, you know, what do we all need this weekend? Okay what you, you know, and energy follows intention. Give it a little moment of thought. What is our intention this weekend? And then again, on Sunday, what's our intention this week? What do I, what do I need to attend to? What's, what's important? What do I, what do I need to handle so I can be present and help these humans? Um, so that's the gist. I have more to say. I'm just going to check in on the questions to see if I kind of got there with the people that shared on Instagram. There was big emotions and not taking it personally. I think I said something, some good stuff about that. Regulating so homework can get done. I gave you some thoughts on that. Again, it's finding the rhythm. Uh, finding time together. Again, especially with your people as they get older, they've got a lot more going on. And so Bernadette, Noel and I created Slow Family Living. And one of our big things was uh, put family time on the calendar. Don't leave it to chance. And even if you do leave it to chance, have a few things that you know, okay, we found three hours this Sunday that we didn't expect. All right, let me look at our list. It's on my notes. Oh, we could go for a hike. We could lay around and just have our own time. We could uh, do a puzzle. Like consider the ways that you would want to connect and get them in on it. Make the family list. So that when you do find yourself with downtime and everybody has a little more juice in them to be connected, you've got some ideas of the things that we love to do as a family. Um, the other was managing exhaustion and the need to move that her kids are, you know, they're, they, they went, they were moving all summer. They were outside, they were, Free to, free to move about and they're not doing that and yet they're exhausted at the end of the day. So how do you balance that? And so again, uh, I think it has a lot to do with experimenting and you know, saying, okay, well, typically they come home and we have a snack and then we start homework. So what if we had our snack outside? I had, I, you know, we were able to get a snack and have it outside. And then, uh, you know, we ran around. If they're outside, I mean, Bernadette said this all the time with when her kids were little, when they're outside, if you don't even bring them in, different things start to happen. So you could say, we do snack outside. Here you go, welcome home, here you go. Or if they're at aftercare and you're at work, you know, really, how do you wanna do, maybe you do dinner, maybe dinner isn't a big cooked meal. Maybe it's, you know, uh, Pizza or, I love pizza, so I say pizza a lot. Um, <laughs> maybe it's sandwiches, maybe it's snack trays. Like not every day has to be a big cooked meal if that doesn't work for your family. 
And maybe it's the connection and that time together that's more valuable than the actual food. You know, maybe there's big family cooked dinners on Saturday and Sunday and the rest of the week is like, we're going to just figure out ways to have food in the fridge and graze so that our time together feels meaningful. It doesn't feel like we're all scattered trying to prepare some big thing that nobody really gets anything, you know, maybe they enjoy it, but how do you want to play with that? I guess that's the big question. Okay. So what a treat. Thank you first and foremost for being here and still being here. Uh, second, like I said, this is my deepest joy. And uh, I hope that comes through because getting to share this stuff, uh, I love it. And I haven't done it. I've been focused more on personhood, which I also love, as you can tell, because it's, it's the foundation of all of it. Um, but I'm moving myself back into talking about family life and giving people really useful sound, uh, things that have been tried and experimented with for years through my work with the community that I've been working with. Um, and I'm ready to bring it back. And so basically, um, I'm going to do a nine month coaching program. So while your kids are in school this year, and then it'll be done when they get out, I'm going to be sharing, uh, Person, I'm going to be exploring personhood and family life with a community of people in an in a opportunity that I'm inviting you to, which is called the Humanhood Collective. Um, and it's basically nine months of coaching, and it'll be six core modules, and I'm thrilled about them. The first one that starts in the middle of September is Triggers, and I've done it before, but it's going to be all fresh and new. Um, and it's really what I was talking about earlier, which is how do you handle, again, that word handle, how do you handle your nervous system, yourself, when you get dysregulated? How can you be with you and model for your people ways of dealing with stress? And there are tools that can help you get better at that. You don't have to always be in reaction. It's very possible and it doesn't take that much time to rewire it just takes awareness so that's the first one then we're going to do steadying yourself through the holidays because here's the thing the holidays can be loaded and there's so much joy and there's so much implicit reflection of the year and there's so much time of connection and yet a lot of times we're just doing it by default we're not actually considering how we want it to go and for me, once COVID hit and we all shook up our lives so different, it, our lives became so different, um, it's got me thinking like, what if we shook it up around all these things that are kind of defaults, the, the holidays, then we're gonna do, um, so I'll be supporting you through the holidays. So it's, so third one is uh, basically a best year yet, like taking a month in January, and considering, well, what do I want this year? How do I want to fuel myself? How do I want to steady myself? What are my dreams? What's calling me that I want to give energy and intention to? Um, and then the same with relationships. You know, you've got these, there's me and there's we. So what is this about? What is this family life about? What are these important people in my life? How do we want to relate? How do I want to show up for them? We're going to do a whole month on that. Then we're gonna look at our habits and practices and boundaries around technology because it's not going anywhere. It's more implicit than it ever was. And we could easily just keep, oh, I'm checking my phone all the time, I'm doing this. And your people are watching and they're creating their own habits. What if you took a month and just said, well, how am I doing this? And how do I wanna do this? Like, what if once a year we just did our technology screen time awareness month where we just considered there's no right way it's just being thoughtful and taking a moment to pause and say is this how I want to do it or do I want to try something else and then lastly we'll be sailing into summer because again that's another transition that you want to be thoughtful about and it's a great place to practice really dialing in how do I want to spend the season so 
Uh, those are the core modules. There'll be four calls for each, weekly calls, noon this time on Tuesdays. Um, then there'll be breaks where you're not, we're not together, but we're still doing our daily emails Monday through Friday with prompts. So you can start practicing how to pause, how to check in, uh, how to dream, all the stuff, all the essentials. You're gonna practice them for nine months. Uh, the monthly Q and A. So you send me your questions. We get on a call. I answer them. I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. There's a Facebook community if you so desire. Um, and then you get access to my online e-courses. So I have it on toddlerhood, parenting essentials, and on teenhood, which is amazing. I did that last fall. Now it's available digitally, and I want you to have it. And the best part is that if you sign up before September 6th, so I'll be really talking about this starting the 7th, but if you sign up before the 6th, today would be great, uh, you get two calls with me, two one-on-one, -on -one, so you can just Pick my brain, you can use it straight away so I can get a sense of what you're working on and, and, and have an awareness of what you're choosing to create. You can use it in the middle, you can use it at the end, whatever feels really good for you. So uh, this is my heart's passion. This is my best stuff. This is my newest version, my evolved I've been sort of off of this for a while and I am like, yeah, I'm so ready to get going. My butt wiggles when I think about it. Um, and I would love to have you. And a lot of you have been with me and it might be fun to come back and just take this year to slow it all down and consider and really just give yourself this time. Uh, ooh, it makes my heart like almost a little weepy of like, like, oh, I just want to wrap you all up and give you hugs. And that's what I'm gonna be doing virtually with the courses and the emails and the, the community. So I'll pause there. Uh, I'm available for uh, calls. If you wanna ask me questions individually about this, you can shoot me an email. You can sign up to get, oh, Megan just posted a little 15 minute chat. Um, and we can we can kind of assess if it's what you need and 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 if it's you know worth the time and investment. I promise you it is, and I understand it's a big decision. So give it some thought, consider, tune in, thinking, feeling, knowing, ask your gut, your inner wisdom, your guide inside. If this is the time you want to embark on this with me, uh, I will welcome you with open arms. And I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Uh, I am going to shift and not do any discussion now, but if you have questions for me, shoot them over. Hello at kerryconti.com. Sign up if you want to talk about the offering. Sign up if you're like, yeah, let me in. I want it. I want it. Um, and if I hope I get to play with you this year. And if nothing else, thank you so much for coming to this. And uh, I send you just a giant heart full of love. Mwah. Thank you so much. Bye.